It has been a busy day for us here at iFixit. Not only did we just release a teardown for the iPad mini, but before tools even had the chance to get cold, here we are to bring you the insides of the iPad 4 as well. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today we're going to take a look at Apple's latest tablet, the iPad 4. Let's just be honest, the iPad 4 is the perfect example of an incremental upgrade. Coming in just months after the last new iPad, the iPad 4 offers upgraded performance, but basically zero external changes. On the surface, the new iPad is the same as the last new iPad. Same height, weight, retina display, and battery life. But perhaps there are some subtle differences lurking beneath the surface. There's only one way to find out, and that's to give the iPad 4 a proper iFixit teardown. Getting started, there were no surprises. Traditionally, opening up an iPad has involved softening lots of adhesive, and this iPad was no exception. Some liberal use of our eye opener tool and some handy guitar picks makes lifting off the front panel a breeze. Once the display was removed, we got a good look at the insides of the iPad 4, which is basically comprised of a very large battery and a slim logic board. If this all sounds familiar, that's because it is. This basically looks identical to the iPad 3. Hmm. Well, I'm sure we'll find something different further in. The iPad 4's battery is, well, identical to the battery in the iPad 3, down to the model number. 3.7 volts, 43 watt hours, and 11,560 milliamp hours. Well, nothing new yet. Hmm. Oh, I know, the new lightning connector. The iPad 4 got the new lightning connector. In all the other devices we've seen that got the new lightning connector, we saw a real need for a smaller size connector. Specifically, I'm remembering the iPhone 5. There just wasn't any room in the iPhone 5 for a larger style connector. But in the case of the iPad 4, space doesn't seem to be an issue, as it looks like the lightning connector is basically just sitting in the same slot the 30-pin connector would usually go. In fact, a lot of people were expecting the iPad 4 to have upgraded speakers, like the iPad mini, since there's all that extra room down by the dock connector. But for some reason, Apple chose to use the same speakers as it did in the iPad 3. On the upside, unlike the iPod Touch and the iPhone 5, the iPad 4's lightning connector seems to be on its own cable, which is great news, because replacing it won't require an entirely new logic board. Speaking of logic boards, the one and absolute biggest upgrade to this iPad is the A6X processor, which has one gig of RAM. Apple claims that this new processor will double performance of both the CPU and GPU, making the iPad feel faster and more responsive. Preliminary Geekbench tests showing up on the internet seem to show that this is the case. Moving forward, we found another legitimate upgrade. The iPad 4 got an updated 1.2 megapixel HD FaceTime camera, capable of taking 720p video. After fighting the feeling of deja vu during the entire iPad 4 teardown, we were finally able to assess it for repairability. Here at iFixit, we're interested in knowing just how repairable devices are, not just because we want to support the growing DIY repair community, but also because repair is essential in ensuring that we're making the best use of raw materials possible, and also that we're on a path to responsible consumption. So to that end, we score every device we tear down for repairability between 1 and 10, 1 being the least repairable and 10 being the most repairable. The iPad 4 scored a 2 out of 10, and here's why. Just like the iPad 2 and 3, the front panel is glued to the rest of the device, greatly increasing the chances of cracking the glass when trying to remove it. Copious amounts of adhesive hold everything in place, including the prone to start a fire if punctured battery. The LCD has foam sticky tape adhering it to the front panel, increasing chances of it being shattered during disassembly. You can't access the front panel's connector until you remove the LCD. That wraps up our teardown. For the complete teardown, including gorgeous high-resolution images, make sure you check out ifixit.com. For all the latest teardowns and repair videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at iFixit, and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and happy repairing.